There it is, ladies and gentlemen, the national high school record, highest girl ever in the history of Poland. Paige Summer. Paige Summer. Paige was this little kid that she did not walk from room to room. She ran wherever she went. She was this little bouncing blonde. I had her pigtails, matching socks to go with her uniforms. And she just had the, the physique of a pole vaulter. She had the attitude of a pole vaulter. I mean, she would just take out the competition and it, they called her the beast and she was this little petite, tiny thing. So from the very, very start, we knew we had something special and that she was gonna accomplish big things. Let's go. get faster, you can always get stronger, you can always improve stuff, so I think that's just a really important thing to know. Obviously, records are meant to be broken, so that's just really cool to me, because I'm always wanting to top it, so there's no limit. I actually started pole vaulting in, in high school, not knowing that my grandfather uh, had been a pole vaulter. He was born, I think, in 1910, and he lived in Missouri. So the, the legend is that he was the first 13-footer in the state of Missouri. Now, those are days when you're on a bamboo pole, you have sawdust. I think he attended a couple years of college, and he did that at the college, is what the, the rumor is, or the legend. <laughs> Pole vaulting has been around in our household for a very, very long time. I can tell you honestly that I met John when I was 18, and so I've been watching pole vault for a long, many, many years. In his office at home, he just has a bunch of like awards and pictures of him vaulting. So I think just growing up seeing that, like just something I wanted to do with me being like a daredevil and like liking adventure, that's just something that I was like, that seems really cool to do. So I'd come home from work and sit when she was in sixth grade and she would there'd be post-it notes all over my office, let Paige pull ball. So when he came home every single day, there was a new sticky note and he eventually was just like, okay, I'll take you out. <laughs> I think he got annoyed of me bugging him all the time, so he was like, okay, I'll take you out. We'll see how it goes, so. That's where everything started. I started taking her around to high schools, and we basically climbed fences and sneak on. So when she was in sixth grade, you know, we'd, we'd go use the pits, and we actually got, you know, kicked out many times. It was quality time for us. Um, he's very supportive of like what my dreams are and really helpful to get me there. So just having him and doing it together has just been awesome. I hadn't been in the sport for a long time. All my knowledge from the sport comes from Anthony Curran. Anthony Curran coached me at UCLA. Okay. There you go. And the biggest 137 you have. Just drill it. Don't worry about it. I, I would say drill this till you get the feeling of that. I consider him one of the premier technical uh, coaches for pole vault. I, you know, a lot of people say that women coming into the sport of pole vaulting, obviously I was coaching the first women ever to do it in the United States, and I had six girls at the first ever Olympic trials, and you know, some of them had only jumped 12 feet, I and mean, that was, that's what it took to go to the Olympic trials. So I've seen great progression, obviously, with women's pole vault, but I knew it was gonna be there all along. <laughs> he obviously has coached kids from nothing to being good vaulters, so we definitely had his help and 
him coaching me and giving us drills and stuff. We started preparing definitely our freshman year to see if she could compete at the state meet. Like, you know, John would definitely come to me and say, what does she need to do? And I go, well, she needs to be a little faster. She needs to be a little bit better on the high bar and the rings get stronger. I present to you the 2018 qualifiers for the state meet. Masters champion, who was the CIF champion from Westlake, Paige Summers. <laughs> My dad would always look her up and tell me how amazing she was. And I finally got to see for myself once I met her and started training with her. She's just, she's like a ray of sunshine. She is one of the hardest working kids on and off the field. She's just one of those always smiling. Her work ethic is just impeccable. I mean, she's amazing. She's really supportive. Just like, honestly, just a really great teammate. Super supportive. Like will like cheer you on, everything, have a good time, and then she'll go and put vault and just still do amazing. She had a different mindset than 98% of the athletes that you, that you coach. So I knew that that was, a gift that I was having. Like John would brought her out and I go, I, I'm given a gift right now. So it's a lot easier to coach someone like that. But there's a little more pressure. Oh, yeah. She is self-driven. Uh, she knows what she wants. She's known early on. I mean, in sixth grade, she knew what she wanted. And we used to run stairs together and do things. And she was talking about being the best in high school and stuff like that. I mean, she is just a self-driven, motivated person. Attempt 14 feet 6 inches. Call. We're going to start our work call now. Again. That's it! Ah! Ah! Woo! Woo! Okay, okay, so we're we're the center of the MCU. Oh my God. Kate Slummer has just won up for a national Unbelievable. 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 the yard today. Congratulations, Kate. Year after the 14-6 meet, that's when I was like, oh, I have a chance at national record this year, like junior year, and then I have all of next year to keep improving. China has identified the cause of the mysterious new virus. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. There are fears are rapidly spreading. So she sets that state record um, of 14.6 and then they shut everything down. So what we did is we just didn't know where this was gonna go. So we almost started her season over, just not knowing when this thing's gonna open up again. Pole vault, you need all the equipment to you know practice and keep improving. So that was the most difficult thing on my end just because um, our high school closed, the, the track wasn't open to anyone. During COVID, it, it was quite difficult to be honest at home. Her and John, you know, it's a love. This sport is a love of theirs. And to have that taken away um, was very difficult because it's something that's such a big part of our lives. We didn't have a place to even train. They, they locked down, you know, Wessex High School. So again, we went back to our roots and we snuck on some schools. And so we kept training that way. But, we had to definitely adjust and take the opportunities as they came. You know? And I always told her, you know, you're training everybody else is sitting at home doing nothing. I said, so you're gonna have an advantage on everybody. Having the Walter Club meet some Menifee, I think, saved my season and really was just a defining moment just because that was my only opportunity. Those are the only meets I had. Meets are, for pole vaulting is really important because you need to get the feel of a meet. Every meet is different. It's not like a running event where you know exactly what's gonna happen. Like there's just so many factors that meant you just kind of have to know like what pole to be on and what height, what standards, what run. Knowing Vaulter Club was there and they had meets going on in that summer and kind of all year, that just gave me a reason to keep pushing in practice and something to look forward to. And, Getting that practice is just super important, especially leading to my senior year. I just 
needed to dial everything in. So yeah, I just think they were a super big help and that gave me a lot of confidence knowing that I was just jumping bars and getting used to that. Ladies and gentlemen, the national high school record, highest girl ever in the history of pole vault. It's a player 14 feet 8 and a half inches. Um, I had jumped the 14 and a half at Vulture Club, but I, it wasn't like counting for like uh, high school rules, I guess, so. You know, obviously there's some controversy on is this, does this count? You know, it's just a pole vault only meet. So we definitely wanted to do it at a real, real, you know, official high school meet. losing time um, every big meet that we wanted to go to was being canceled uh, it, it, it was it just very difficult situation we had to definitely adjust and and kind of take the opportunities as they came you know when an opportunity came we jumped on it my concern the whole time was that her getting injured because we were John was trying to find meets for her to compete at and I thought if there was too many meets she might be exhausted and not recover in between meets Yeah, I felt a lot of pressure just because I didn't know, like I didn't have that many more meets for the rest of the year and I was really hoping to get a 14-9 vault in. We did a lot to set that meet up to have that be a, this is kind of a last chance, let's do this right now. She was ready. I, she, I mean, I knew she was ready to jump high. Um, she had, we, we kind of peaked her for these, these meets. It was pretty different that day because it was Armani League Finals, so there was a lot of people there and a lot of people watching her, a lot of people on that side of the stands near the pole vault. That also put pressure just because I wanted to do well in front of everyone. I knew that if, you know, I know how I got this meet or something to happen, like there was no rest of the season for me, so it was a lot of pressure. But well, once the bar raised to 14.9, I was like nervous for her. I was like, wow, this is crazy. Let's go, Paige! Here we go! I think the pressure was just like, I didn't want people to see me do worse and think that the 14 and a half at Vulture Club was like just a lucky jump that I got. I wanted to like prove myself again and be like, I can jump 14s consistently. And that was like my goal, so I think that's when I felt pressure, just wanting to prove it. And her whole family was there, like friends, just everyone. Everyone just went crazy and was so excited. Just in pure shock. Mm -hmm. I just ran to my dad. He's been on this journey with me, so we always celebrate together. And that was just like a big milestone in my high school bullwalk career for us and what we've been shooting for all year. And so that was just awesome. <laughs> You know, she was prepped to, to jump high, and, and she obviously, you know, got it done that day. And she was on that day. She, she just, I mean, every, she made all first attempts except for one bar. It was an unbelievable feeling. It really, really was. She works very hard, and nobody deserves it more. Every year we set goals, and this year, you know, we set a bunch of goals, but the two main goals that we set were to get the national record and to go to the Olympic trials. Then after the 14-9 ball, I was like, okay, this could make it, and so it was just kind of us every five minutes refreshing to see if I made it. <laughs>
I called Paige up when I finally when I found out she made it. I was just so overjoyed. Like my mom and I just started crying our eyes out. My dad was jumping up and down. It was just so awesome. That was her dream. I mean, Olympics, Olympic trials, anything related to the Olympics is her dream. I just basically wanted her to go in and enjoy it. Like take it in. I said, take it all in. Watch everything that's going on. Enjoy being there with the professionals. Strike up conversations with them. Um, I was vaulting with like my idols and people that I've studied their vaults and wanted to be like them one day and just to be in the same pit as them. I was like, this is crazy. Like it was a little bit overwhelming to her because this is the first time that she, as a newly 18-year-old, is going to have to walk into this a big arena, and the emotions kind of overcame her and she realized what she had accomplished. And as we say goodbye to her, Sandy Morris, her idol of all time, walked by and she just looked back and went, and she's walking behind Sandy Morris into the athlete's tent. And you know, <laughs> for her, it was just so exciting and so amazing that she had made it. She had two years of kind of craziness with lockdowns and shutdowns with COVID. And to be able to pull it off and persevere and to be able to jump that bar, uh, you know, kind of when, when she needed to, it was amazing. We have this joke where he always says we, he'll be like, oh my God, we jumped 14.9 today. And I'm like, that was me. I was going over the bar, so I'm like, I jumped 14.9. He goes, no, no, we. So that's always our joke. mental blocks and the hard times have just helped me to get to this point, so I keep it the same.